Good evening to you tonight and welcome. Day number 180. We are six months in and yep, number three. Um, very cool one here. Brown with the blue and then on the back. Um, so thank all of you for being here tonight. It has been a crazy, crazy day. Um, Coronel, Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to you. Joan of Arc. Man, we've got Sailor Jimothy. All we need in here next is napoleon and we're rolling um so welcome guys thank you it has been a crazy busy day getting things here prepared i was working this morning packing it's quite intensive packing trying to be very organized and um, i looked out my front window and there were packages like crazy on the front porch i ran over um to our church and i grabbed our Administrator Luann, who's helping with all of this on the financial side, as well as Pastor Kent, and they're doing a phenomenal job, um, but it was shocking, the amount of tourniquets and chest seals. You guys are unbelievable, and yes, every one of them are going. Um, so just, it was crazy. Some of you put gift receipts in there. It said, enjoy your gift from Blake Parker. Uh, thank you very much, Blake. I hope it saves lives from Elise Nolte. Um, God bless you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your gift. Prayers to all the brave Ukrainian people. The soulless beast will be defeated from Sandra D. Funkhauser. I love that name. Slava Ukraina from Stan Glasso. Folks, I have no clue who you are, but I want to tell you this. Thank you. And everyone will be there and hand it off. So thank you very much. Um, so we're going to jump right in tonight. Oklahoma, I see you there, say Welcome to you, sir. Um, Olds Guard out there in California. Rita Berryman down in Virginia. Andre Tremblay, Montreal. Welcome to you, sir. Sailor Jimothy, Mr. Minnesota. Ted Morris in the house with the thumbs up. Now, Shirley Phelps, Washington, welcome. Listen. I'm going to start here tonight because, please, if you are on Facebook, switch to YouTube. It's as clear as I can request. I'll show you how to do it because I'm working with Haywood on a lot of the preparation for being mobile. That is the broadcast engineer that helps me. Um, will we get a grand total of the medical supplies Absolutely. You will get a grand total tomorrow night because more are coming tomorrow. I already know it. Um, so listen, um, please get to YouTube because there will be situations where I will only be able to get to YouTube because we will only be able to broadcast when it's safe, when it's appropriate, when it's right. I'll always try to have an update at 9 o'clock. Um, I can fire that remotely so schedule is normal. But there will also be opportunities for shorts and other little videos that we'll be able to put up um, that are safe to put up. But I will only be able to get those guys to YouTube. If you're on Facebook, you're going to miss it. Reddit, you'll get it because I'll pop it over to there. Um, but Facebook, it just doesn't flow like that. So with that said, before we jump in, here is how you do that. Hey, friends. Before Pastor Greg leaves for Europe, we want to make sure you don't miss out on any of his updates. So if you're watching from Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, or Reddit, we encourage you to join us on YouTube. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash Greg Terry Experience and be sure to click the button to subscribe and hit the bell for alerts. Or if you're watching from a smart TV or device, just search Greg Terry Experience in the YouTube app. Once again, be sure to subscribe and sign up for alerts so you don't miss anything. The best way to engage with the experience is from YouTube and we'd love for you to join us there. See you there in Slava, Ukraine. So there you have it. So thank you. Ted Morris, you're quick. Um, so amazing how everyone has jumped in to help the Ukrainian soldiers. Yeah, it's shocking. I was packing. I looked out the front window, and my goodness, you called it. My Times said cover story, the Rasputin 2.0 calling revenge of Ukraine for the Russians killing his daughter. Oh, absolutely. This is easy. Absolutely. I, I have more on that tonight. You, you guys buckle your seatbelts. This update tonight's lit. Um, going to be really, really good. So thank you for jumping to YouTube. And um, 
Let the adventure begin. Yes, we do have internet connection, multiple layers. Uh, Genia actually runs, it's either two or three different connections. And thank you, Elon Musk. Um, with that said, let's get right to it, guys. Thank you. 24-hour update. We're going to start in the upper left, and we're going to go clockwise tonight. Unfortunately, significant alert warnings out of Kiev have been posted for the green shaded area. That would include the regions of Volin, Rivna, and Zhitomer. The intelligence is telling them that there is such a buildup into that upper left corner of Belarus, Poland, and Ukraine, stretching across all the way above Chernigov, that they're expecting something. They do not know what. It may just be an increase in the air and the shelling of those northern regions, but they're looking at it very closely and putting the warnings out for those regions, as well as Kiev. Kiev is put under alert. Um, really expecting provocations over the next week. So we shall see. Rotate around to the right, Kharkiv, as we always discuss, every night, nonstop shelling, 24-7. It's the way of life in Kharkiv. If you see the blue dot north of Kharkiv, munitions dump in Belgorod was destroyed um, last night. This is all within the last 24 hours. So that is in Russian territory. Of course, that is one of the major supply lines, if not the major, for supplying the Russian Federation on the north of Kharkiv. Jumping down to the right, you see the red shaded circle. It is ugly in the east. We talked about last night how that Ukraine is losing some ground in some of those uh, small towns and villages. And they're getting to the edge of where the towns are running out, and then you're getting into the rural areas, and then the warfare will change. But right now, it's ugly there. In fact, I'm going to show you something from Marinka in just a few minutes. Drop down below Donetsk, major explosions and munition dumps being struck just south of Donetsk. In fact, there were some major explosions just about an hour ago in that region. Ukraine's worrying that out. Zaporozhia being struck through the air. Zaporozhia nuclear power plant, I had the symbol there for you. That was not the problem today. I'm going to introduce you guys tonight to something that you may or may not know that stands beside the Zaporozhia nuclear power plant. To the left of that, Novokokovka, the bridge there and munitions were smashed this morning by Ukraine. Blue dot, good Ukraine. Red dot, trouble. Green shading, green circle, watch out. Mikolaev, red circle struck. Hedersohn, you see the blue dot. Antonovsky Bridge. I'll teach you a Russian, word, a Russian phrase tonight. You ready? You've heard this on all the movies, so don't worry. Dosvidanya. Dosvidanya. Antonovsky Bridge. She's gone. You say, oh, what do you mean gone? Done. Kaput. Irreparable. They smoked it today, and I've got video to show it to you. Um, Odessa was struck by cruise missiles from the Black Sea again, and Ukraine was also able to hit again with drone down near Sevastopol. It was a good day for Ukraine, but it was also a tough day in areas. Um, so there's your kind of around-the-clock look there. Ghani King King, I see you there in Manila, Philippines. Welcome to you tonight, my friend. God bless you all the way over there in Manila tomorrow. It's tomorrow there. Um, so that is what the update is there around the clock. Now we're going to zoom in and look at some things specifically. Ukraine hits the Antonisky Bridge. It's over. Over. And tonight you're going to hear um, one of the leaders there that is responsible on the Ukrainian side who talks about it and what happened. So we'll just start there. Antonisky Bridge, here's your update. 
Добрий день, ми з України, Херсонщина, це Україна, слава Україні! Героям слава, звісно, це Україна, ну і точно день добрий. У нас добрі новини про Антонівський міст, чи не так? Так, дійсно, взагалі сьогодні ранок розпочався зі знищення окупантів в Новій Каховці, в Таврійському, в Малій Каховці і в Каховці. Там були знищені е, якраз і розташування окупантів, і військова техніка окупантів. Ну і на завершення дуже потужний удар по Антонівському мосту. До речі, по ньому рухалась колона. На завтівок Російської Федерації з боєприпасами і саме удар по Антонівському мосту прийшовся в той час, коли рухалась колона, здетонували ті боєприпаси, які були в КАМАЗа. Десятка було і дуже потужна детонація. Люди дзвонять, кажуть, ну це, це в перший раз таке. Мост розлітався, просто бетон розлітався навколо і долітав до самого Антонівка і вже свідки, як то кажуть, що можливо остаточно все. Вже пробувала настільки велика, тобто, я кажу, мост фактично розвалився на сьогоднішній день проїзду і можливо його Відремонтувати немає абсолютно. Вже б якби окупант не намагався його відремонтувати і урочисте відкрити, до речі, вони анонсували урочисте відкриття, тепер вже, не, вже в них такої змоги не буде. Вже, Ант, вже Антонівський мост, ан, остаточно все. Остаточно. Uh, there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to there. He said um, it's completely irreparable. Uh, a Kamaz was hit. Maybe you do not know what a Kamaz is, but a Kamaz is a truck, um, large trucks that are manufactured in Russia, and they're used to transport military equipment. They also have a civilian line, Kamaz, tractor trailers, um, it's a truck, big heavy duty truck line. So that's what the word Kamaz meant. At the end, you saw him say they were going to have a grand opening, but there is nothing now to open. And then the last word you heard him say, you may, you know, you're not hearing it, not knowing the language, but his last word was, uh, spell it in English letters, V S Y O. What does that mean? Kaput, over. Done. It's a one-word phrase, one-word slang that means that's it, over. Um, so the Antoniski Bridge, and that is direct. It's a lot of that hiccup in there that you were hearing in the in the transmission was satellite on their end. Um, that's not your internet. You're good to go watching tonight. Now let's keep going. So that is really huge news. Marinka and Avdivka. This is out in the east. You see Donets there. You see three black circles. I've been sharing with you about these three towns pretty much every night for a couple of weeks. First of all, you have Avdivka, and that is the road that heads to Bakhmut, Slavyansk, Kramatorsk. Avdivka is falling. Secondly, Piski, the middle circle. Oh, 10 days ago or so, I showed you a video about Piski. Piski is falling. It's going to fall. It's fell. It's, it's done. Um, they're just erasing it from the earth right now. But that's it. Now the road to Nipro is smooth sailing. And down toward the bottom, Marinka. That is the lower road coming out of the Nets region that pushes over to Zaporozhia. You get beyond those three cities, it's rural, it's no man's land, farmland, country living, and smooth sailing. It'll be a completely different type of warfare. This is why Ukraine needs the weapons to be able to strike from a long distance. Now, unfortunately... The Russian Federation is completely using illegal tactics um, in warfare. And you guys that are military in here, you will know this. They're using phosphorus munitions to erase these cities. Now, Marinka, it's already gone. It's destroyed. There's very few Ukrainians there. 
Ukraine is trying to hold it from a distance. You're not looking at urban warfare here. Um, it's, it's, there's, nothing, there's nothing there. But now what they're doing is melting it, literally. Um, so let me show you this. This is from last night in Marinka. Now, that's some guys that are still there and um, got the video out. They were using some colorful language. And you guys know that is the phosphorus munitions. We saw them as early as, what, 45 days in the war um, against Mariupol, against Azovstal, against the defenders there. And it's just, and you guys know more than I know, but it's over. That melts, it erases, it's difficult to survive, and the purpose is to scorch that earth. And it's, it's, it's happening, unfortunately. So, good days in a lot of the areas, pretty tough over here in the east. But we've, we're prepared for that, we know. Now, tonight I want to introduce all of you to the Zaporozhia Thermal Power Plant. He said, hold on, what do you mean? Thermal? I thought the nuclear power plant is there. It is. They're side by side. Zaporozhia nuclear power plant right on the river. That's the red circle going down with the arrow. Directly adjacent to it on the east side is the Zaporozhia thermal power plant. You have two plants there side by side. Russia has increased its shelling, but today they were shelling the Zaporozhia thermal power plant. Unfortunately, people lost their lives, and it was a terrible day in Energodar. It was a terrible day. Um, little video here. There is one little part in it, but I've blurred it out. You're safe. It's just going to give you a feel of it. There's a gentleman driving. And um, he literally watched the shelling take place at the thermal power plant. He decided once it was over to drive in. He began to see some things, and he drove out quickly. I'll let you get a little insight on that. Here you go. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. I mean, it was a taxi driver. There were others that were wounded and killed there today at the thermal power plant. He must have been going to pick somebody up. Had no clue that the shelling was coming. Um, so very tough day in some areas, very good day in others. But it gives you a real sense. You were there just now with that gentleman. He drives in, just going to check it out. And oh, my goodness, I've got to get out of here. And you could also see some of the um, piping there. Where, with all the holes in it, with the water leaking down, I I don't I'm not a thermal power plant engineer, but I'm sure they're important somehow for inflow or outflow. Um, but that's where we're at on that and very very sad day there in Energodar. Um, now, Kiev today is playing a little bit of chess with Belarus. Why? Belarus a few days ago, Lukashenko, the president the dictator of Belarus said that Belarus is not going to fight in this war. We're not fighting in the war. And Hey, it's not Belarus. In fact, Ukraine's not at war. It's America and NATO fighting Russia. I've shared that with you a few nights. Well, Kiev released today, a public warning 
about trusting Belarus. They released pre-war classified information on conversations today, and now I'll give it to you. They said, on the eve of February 24th, the generals of Belarus stated that there would be no attack on Ukraine from their territory. A few days before the full-scale invasion, there was a direct communication between our Minister of Defense and the Minister of Defense of Belarus. He guaranteed, gave the word of the general officer that there would be no war activity on the territory of Belarus. What happened next is known to the whole world. Of course, Russia invaded through Belarus. What happens next, the whole world will see. The guilty will be punished. Bottom line, this is what really happened prior to February the 24th. Therefore, do not believe one word that Lukashenko or Belarus says. Ukraine is getting very straight and direct with their conversations. You'll see some more of that in a moment. Today, this is the picture over Azovstal. They are preparing for the tribunal. That is one of the stacks there at Azovstal in Mariupol. You see the huge flag hanging up on that stack. Last night, I shared with you that Zelensky was very direct about the red line or the line in the sand. Ukraine makes clear its position to the world regarding the tribunal. And I shared with you what, it's, what he said. Tonight, I've got some of it translated for you so you can hear it for yourself. This is President Zelensky. Now, when I share this with you and you listen to him, the translation is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And you say, well, how do you know it's perfect? Because I didn't translate it. My guys there did. It's perfect. Secondly, Zelensky changes his talk. Just pay attention to it. Because over these six months, it's been what the United States says to Ukraine. Okay, listen, we're going to give you these weapons. You can strike these areas, but don't touch that. Um, NATO, well, we're going to do this or do that. We're going to give you this money. We're going to give you these weapons. You can buy this. We're going to train your soldiers. You can do this, but you can't do that. And Ukraine has went along with that plan. But Ukraine is being erased off the face of the earth. Zelensky changed how he was communicating last night. He now is not listening for these nations. He's becoming a true world leader. It's what the world needs, folks. A true world leader. A good one. And Zelensky began to speak to nations about what Ukraine is going to do. Complete change in his strategy. Here it is, President Zelensky from last night. Будеть-Макрон Впевнений, теж буде реагувати. Вони та інші світові лідери отримали від нас відповідні сигнали. Усі все розуміють. Розуміють, що роблять окупанти і чим це загрожує. І розуміють, що Україна не стане цього терпіти. Не стане терпіти знущання з людей, про яких можна сказати тільки одне. Вони герої своєї батьківщини. Вони захищали свободу свого народу від загарбників на своїй землі. Навіть у час війни мають бути правила. Сили світу точно вистачить, щоб поставити під владу цих правил будь-яку державу, будь-якого терориста. So, you can see it. The, the translation was spot on. He said, okay, we're now informing nations of what Ukraine is going to do, of what we will tolerate. Um, that is an adjustment in his strategy very direct, speaking about how Ukraine is dealing with foreign nations that are helping Ukraine. A very, very key moment there, and that would have happened on day 179, and we're now on day 180. Now, after President Zelensky made that statement last night, now you have it translated, today, Pushilin, 
Remember who Pushlin is. Pushlin is the leader of the Donetsk People's Republic. He responded today to Zelensky's statement that you just watched. He said this will be a determining factor um, in the war going forward, but we're not backing down. The leader of the DPR, Pushlin, said that the requirements of Vladimir Zelensky will not affect plans to hold a tribunal over Ukrainian prisoners of war in Mariupol. Pushlin stated the materials for the tribunal are already fully prepared. I did have some pictures today of the theater there in Mariupol where they built the cages, the, the holding cells on the stage, the garage where the prisoners would be delivered. Um, it's all done. Now, we keep hearing 24th, 24th, we shall see. But it looks like we're coming along to that. Remember Boris Nemtsov? Probably not. Maybe you do. I'm sure we have lots of smart people in this community. Boris Nemtsov is the former prime deputy prime minister of Russia. He was the governor of Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, Nizhny Novgorod is a powerful, big city uh, east of Moscow. Modern, beautiful. Nizhny, Nizhny Nov Novgorod is a beautiful city. Um. This guy right here, Boris Nemtsov, was 100% anti-Putin, anti the regime of the Kremlin. He was outspoken, uh, very direct, and he was assassinated in 2015. He has been gone for seven years. That is his picture. He told the world that the future would go downhill unless Putin was stopped. In 2014, he gave an interview. I came across that today. Um, why? Because we're dealing with Dugin and Dugina, the girl, um, his daughter. We'll get to that in a moment. But it pushed me over to the Nimsov uh, information. And what I'm getting ready to show you is going to absolutely blow you away. It, it's, it's shocking. This man right here was prophetic. Not pathetic, he was prophetic and nailed it. Folks, we remember Boris Nimsov talking about what we are now witnessing. Remember, this is 2014. Putin, он язык слов не понимает. Этого человека что может остановить? Я считаю, что только русский народ его может остановить. Если будет безмолвная поддержка, будут посылаться ребята, будут без ног возвращаться, будут гибнуть. Слышали хоть один раз соболезнования? Со стороны главнокомандующего семьям погибших. Но я думаю, что большинство все-таки людей к своим детям относятся как к детям, а не как э, к пушечному мясу. Я убежден, что правдивая информация о положении ребят военных, которые там служат, которые там воюют, которые там погибают, эта правдивая информация перевернула бы общественное мнение буквально за несколько дней. Я все-таки думаю, что ложь и замалчивание правды – это главная причина, почему русские люди поддерживают Путина. Все действия, которые он совершает, как внутри страны, так и за пределами, направлены для реализации главнейшей цели его. Это удержание власти любой ценой. Он видит огромную угрозу в европейском выборе Украины. Это угроза путинизма, угроза его власти, потому что европейский выбор – это демократия, это прямые выборы, это сменяемость власти, это торжество закона и так далее и тому подобное. Поэтому успех Украины на европейском пути – это, конечно, катастрофа для Путина, и это шанс для свободной России, собственно, повторить этот самый украинский путь. Хочет создать марионеточное государство, которую он называет Новороссией. Сейчас пока плацдарм занят, это Луганск и Донецк. Дальше вторая задача, это попытаться прорваться, собственно, к Крыму. Для этого, собственно, они готовятся к штурму Мариуполя. И они Новоазов как раз захватили на днях. Кроме того, им еще нужно Херсон и Запорожье. Там, я думаю, будут большие проблемы. Никакие санкции войну остановить не могут. А вот Ходорковский заговорил вот. о а, а, вот, а вот народ, вышедший на улицу, может остановить войну. Я за то, чтобы прекратить воевать с соседями, за то, чтобы заключить мир с Украиной, чтобы мы занимались школами, больницами, дорогами, пенсионерами, чтобы мы занимались наукой, культурой и образованием. Okay, if that doesn't, uh, that'll put that'll make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. 
I couldn't believe it when I found that today. I was in shock. Everything he said was prophetic. Everything. All of it. Putin will never stop. Putin's power hungry. The only people that can stop Putin are the Russian people revolting, standing up against his policies and doing it from the inside. He said sanctions will never work. They won't. We've, they'll never work. He said, we've already got the bridgehead at Lugansk and Donetsk. I remind you in 2014, that is when that happened. When the separatist, Russian-backed separatist, took portions of Lugansk and Donetsk. What else did he say? The next thing that will have to happen is Crimea will have to close. It happened. He then said, there will be an attack. They're preparing now to go for Mariupol. One of the first places in the war, one of the most famous places in the war, due to the Azovstal defenders. After that, he said, that's not enough. Then, going to have to have Harrison, going to have to have Zaporozhia. We are 180 days into this war, and that man made those statements eight years ago. There's your answer. Probably, the, probably one of the top 10 two-minute clips over 180 days of covering this. Unbelievable. He nailed it. We must pay attention. Now, how did I stumble across that today? Because I was looking at this stuff. Everybody's wondering about Dugin and Dugina and what's going to go on. And today it went nuts. And I know last night, I know, and I had to, people started messaging me. People started messaging me last night and said, you know, oh, you should have known it was the uh, National Republican Army. You were late to that. I said, no, you're wrong. I don't care what Reuters said. I wait for my friends to tell me from inside Ukraine. They never mention NRA. And now it's looking like it's not the National Republican Army. And all those mainline, mainstream medias are going to have to back up on it. Because nobody knows who did it. Nobody. Just because that man jumped up there to get a little attention, most likely they did not do it. Ukrainian intelligence services? Nope. Ukraine said, we did not do this. <laughs> Russia came out today and said an Estonian, Estonian secret agent who is directly connected to the Azov regiment did it. This lady, I mean, and there is so, there is a plethora of her timelines, of her uh, uh, movements, and they're trying to prove that she's not National Republican Army. Nobody knows. Here's what we do know. Who did it is irrelevant. Why? Because Russia is going to use it as munition and fuel to flame the fire so that they can unload even more. We've already called it. We, we've talked about it. You know, Be slow in, in where you throw the credit because you have to understand this culture. They are different than any other culture on the planet. They will play the games. They will play all of the bait and switch. This person did it knowing this person did it. I shared with you early in the stream, Belarus, Lukashenko, we're never coming. We're not going to fight. We're not going to do that. We'll never be there. Kiev had to come out today and say they're all liars. We talked to them before the war started, and they said they never would. And one day later, here comes the tanks from Belarus. The same thing happens in Russia. The same thing will happen in any territory occupied and controlled by Russia. You will never get the truth out of Kherson. You will never get the truth out of Zaporozhye, Donetsk, Lugansk, Crimea, and any other territories that are controlled by Russia. And for sure, you will never get the truth out of anything that happens inside Russian sovereign borders. The Kremlin controls everything. And you will not surprise them. I'm telling you. You have to beat them at their own game. 
That's the only way. And that's what Nimsov knew. So who did it? It's irrelevant. What's going to come from it? Probably going to be ugly. All you need to do is look at that chart I have for you right there. Start at the bottom. Anna Politkovskaya. Tough name there. 5,798 days to find the perpetrator in the death of this activist. They've still not been found. Above her, Natalia Estamirova. 4,786 days required to find the perpetrator in the death of this activist. Still haven't been found. Boris Nimsov, the gentleman you just saw. 2,733 days since he was killed. Still have no clue who killed him. Sure, people have taken credit for it. Nobody knows. And my goodness, we're in a war with Ukraine. And in two days, we know exactly who killed Daria Dubina. Let me tell you something. Do not believe anything that you hear. At the bottom, you see the tweet there and the information come from, from, coming from Podoliak. Uh, you guys know him, speaker, uh, representative out of President Zelensky's office. He said, Russian propaganda lives in a fictional world. Ukrainian woman and her 12-year-old child were assigned responsibility for blowing up the car of propagandist Dugina. Surprisingly, they did not find the Estonian visa on the spot. Vipers in Russia Special Services started an intraspecies fight. That's Podoliak. That's the way Ukraine communicates. What is he saying? You'll never get the truth. Are you going to get his lies? So always keep an eye on that and remember that when you're looking at anything inside of Russia. Finally, last couple of things. Turkey doubles Russian oil imports, filling the EU void. I typically rarely show a headline from mainstream media, but this said it all. It is a fact. <sighs> Days after Erdogan and meeting with, Putin, uh, with uh, Zelensky in Lviv and then saying, you know, I think I'd like to host a summit between Zelensky and Putin in Turkey. He's doubling the Russian oil imports. Just follow the money. I know that Turkey has done quite a few good things with the Bayraktars, the drones, the assistants, helping with the grain exports, and for that, deeply appreciated. But I got news for you. Follow the money. I wouldn't trust them as far as I can throw them. Finally, it happened again. This is every day. Kiev and all of Ukraine, massive warning coming out. This is like four or five days in a row. I translated it for you. It was not on this warning sign. I made that as a graphic for you to see, but it was on a major warning sign out of Kiev. It said, attention. In the coming days, there are credible threats of Russian missile and bomb attacks on decision-making centers and other objects, including civilian ones. Ukrainians are urged to immediately go to the shelter at the first alarm signals, avoid mass gatherings of people, and observe all curfews. Folks, she's heating up. Um, we're on the 22nd. It's already the 23rd in Ukraine. It's 9.41 p.m. Eastern, 4.41 a.m. in Ukraine. And remember... The 24th is their Independence Day. You are fully updated. Tomorrow night, we'll be here. That'll be the last night that we're live, live like this. We'll be live lots of times, hopefully at 9 p.m., but please get to the YouTube. Make sure you're watching there. I'll remind everybody again tomorrow night. Um, thank you for your support. And tomorrow night, we will have a full count and update of how many um, tourniquets are heading over with us to Ukraine. How many chest seals? You guys have been ridiculously amazing. And I've got to give a big shout out there to Jeffrey Fitzgerald, journalistic excellence as usual. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. You are the Emmy winning journalist. I'm just trying to find your footprints. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. That is a gentleman that I've done some streaming with, and um, that man's a legend. So thank you for being here and watching, Jeff. Um, hey, blessings to you all. We'll see you in 23 hours. Be blessed. Peace to you and peace to Ukraine. Good night.